there, friends, and welcome back to Strange Rebel Gaming. I'm Brianna White. Today, I will be interviewing some amazing Final Fantasy VII Remake content creators, my favorite ones, the ones that I've been watching since my introduction to this project. They're all wonderful, wonderful people, as well as being wonderful content creators, and one of the goals for me was to share them all with you, because I know that people are rabid for remake content, and I know I cannot possibly create enough to make you people happy. So I've decided to share these amazing content creators with you all. Here's what I want to do to start us off. I would love to start with the lightning round and just get, just spit some questions out. And what I'll probably have to do is go round table. So not everyone's going to be able to answer every single question, but I have quite a bit and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm talking lightning round. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> this is this is lightning. We got to do it quick. Okay. Here we go. Ryan, what remake character do you identify with the most? Uh, Cloud. Soldier, which Final Fantasy series character do you identify with the most? Cloud. Joy, which remake character would you most want to sit down and drink a beer with? Tifa. Okay. Uh, Ryan, which came first, the chocobo or the egg? The Chocobo. <laughs> Soldier, favorite character theme song? Oh. Quick, lightning Tifa. round. Tifa. Okay, okay, okay. Joy, uh, favorite Final Fantasy series game? <laughs> Come on, quick, quick. Uh, 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 six. Six, okay. Ryan, Aerith or Tifa? Aerith, 100%. Yes. Soldier, <laughs> how many times have you played the demo? 20. <laughs> Joy, how many times will you replay Remake? I'm platinum tropping it. <laughs> Ryan, Ride by Chocobo or Hardy Daytona? Ooh, Hardy Daytona. Okay, Soldier, if you could sacrifice another Final Fantasy VII character to bring Aerith back to life, who would it be? Kate Seath. <laughs> <laughs> like the easiest answer. Hands down. <laughs> Hands down. <laughs> Mood. Okay, okay, okay. Joy, which Final Fantasy game has your favorite Sid? Seven. Ryan, who is your favorite hidden party member? Uh, Vincent. Soldier, which Final Fantasy couple do you ship the hardest? Oh. Quick. Uh, Titus and Yuna. Okay. Uh, next, Brianna, quicker, come on. Uh, Joy. What was better, Final Fantasy 15 or Final Fantasy 10-2? 15. Ryan, what game should be the next remake? Final Fantasy 6. <laughs> Soldier, last question. Aerith or Eris? Aerith. Woo! <laughs> we did it! So Lightning round over! <laughs> you I guys' say hearts pumping? I was like, uh, what? Beer? <laughs> Soldier, you say Aerith until you have to say Aerith's, like, possessive form. And then you're oh. kind of like, mmm, Aerith's. Yeah, sounds. but Aerith's is also weird. Let's be honest. You know which one gets me the most? The SKS. Like, when you're saying, like, desks. Yeah. <laughs> I always add an extra one on the end. It drives me nuts. Um, By the okay. way, I was super afraid of that shipping question. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. like, I almost said something, and I'm like, nope. Safest First course, answer. Safest, safest answer. answer. Interesting. <laughs> you were supposed to go instinct answer, but I, I understand. I understand. You don't want to anger anybody, and we'll get to that later. I get it. Okay. <laughs> were there any lightning round questions that other people felt like they didn't get that question, but they have to answer it? Oh, um, I got one where... Um, which Final Fantasy character you identify as. Like, in the whole series, I would go with Noctis. I mean, I'm the Night Sky Prince, obviously. Gosh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. I sense that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If it's going full series, I, I would be Squall. Okay. Still Cloud. Where's the love for the <laughs> ladies? Come on. I don't know. <laughs> oh, if, if, that, if, that, if that was the case, I probably would have actually said Aerith because she's my favorite female character in the series. Quinna. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> Quinna is the only right answer. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. <laughs> uh. Oh, man. Okay. 
next, I'm going to introduce them all one by one, or rather they'll introduce themselves. Starting with Joy, would you like to go first? Hey, I am Curious Joy. As Brie already said, I do content on YouTube and Twitch, and I'm just obsessed with all things. Just all things. <laughs> just everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're a very enthusiastic and uh, silly, fun person, and that's one of the things I love about you. Oh. So how did I get introduced to you? We met at the Square Enix press conference at E3 20... What freaking year? 19. Last 19. Year. What <laughs> was it? Was it just 2019 a few months yeah. ago? Holy moly. Yeah. Yeah. So we met um, at the press conference and she didn't know why I was there I <laughs> while not. we were chatting. <laughs> and it, it, the funny thing is, like, after it was, like, I remember the day of the press conference, I was like, oh, man, everyone's so excited. Everyone was, was re really waiting to hear the voice of Aerith. And I was like, oh, yeah, she sounds perfect. It's great. And then, like, later that day, we got to know each other. And then the next morning, I look at my Twitter. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she didn't tell me. What in the world? <laughs> There are two reasons for that. And number one is I didn't, I don't know how to be like, I am the voice of Aerith. Like uh, in, in my introduction, I like don't know how to do that because I feel it feels awkward and, and strange. But the other thing is um, now it's my secret new favorite thing to do is to, I did it at E3 later that week. I met a few cosplayers and I was like, can I take a photo with you guys? Great. What's your socials? I'll tag you. And so I tagged them and they were like, oh my God. That's the voice of Aerith. That's crazy. I didn't know. And now that's my favorite thing to do is surprise people. Talk a little bit about the content that you make and um, how people can find you, Joy. Uh, I am on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube, mainly Twitch and Twitter at the moment, but it's Curious Joy, Joy with an I everywhere. And I basically um, center my content around JRPGs, RPGs, action games, and fighting games. And I am just so ready. I have dedicated took time off work i'm so ready for the remake and i just cannot wait and everyone i wasn't going to stream it at first but everyone's like there's no way you can, you did these reaction videos you cannot not stream this after watching your reaction videos i was like okay don't spoil it for me you guys well and now you're officially a remake content creator so i know i know i can't believe it <laughs> I, I literally like the other day just did an unboxing of um the vinyl but i did the whole thing and i was muted and I was like, I don't care if I was muted. I'm still going to put it up. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I just like, did like a QA and a over it. I was like, no, 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 no. Because I was so excited. And so now I'm like muted, excited. I'm like. That's hilarious. Like that sounds amazing. No audio. Listen, we are professionals here. <laughs> and we always do things with our mics muted. All the time. All the time. Okay. Um, you're wonderful. And uh, we'll come back around and talk about your favorite piece of content. But I also want to introduce our other wonderful, beautiful guests. Ryan, tell us about yourself. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm the Night Sky Prince. I've been doing content creation now for about three years, just focused, laser focused on Final Fantasy content creation, although I do some other stuff, too. But, um, man, it's just been truly like a, um, a joy to just uh, be able to be part of this community and to manifest all this good vibes awesome so, so yeah. i actually found your channel because you were one of the very first final fantasy related videos that ever got recommended to me when oh. i had watched the trailer for it. it must it must have been there was a trailer that dropped at state of play right before e3 right <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. So yeah, that was, that's was such Long a funny time. story, right? So there was a rumor that sort of came out right before then. And I was like, it's not going to be there. I had my green screen up and everything. I was prepared. I was like, just in case. And then it actually happened. And like my soul, like immediately left my body. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it was such a wonderful moment. And, um, at that moment, at that point too, um, the game had just been sort of MIA for so long and everyone was just like, where is it at? Where is it at? And so when that rumor happened, everyone was like, there's no way it's going to be there. And then it was. And so it was just it's that huge feeling inside yeah, that, that just trailer hard to was describe. The, the first that trailer was like the beginning of like really serious Final Fantasy VII remake updates and such. Right. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That was the genesis of it all. 
That's right. Yeah, the state of play. And I think it was in May, right? Something like that? Yeah, that was it. That was in May. Yeah. So, wow, it's wow. hard to believe. That was like less than a year ago. I that know, we just, right? All this stuff has just been bombarded on us. Yeah, dude. Not it's that I am complaining. Wild. Yeah. yeah so that's how I found your content. And um, I noticed you were like Final Fantasy specific. And I was like, great. I'll just go here for all my remake news because they don't tell me anything. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I had no idea the whole time. That's yeah. crazy. Yep. I've been watching you for a while. I really like your content. Um, I think oh, it's really you. professional and well done. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on youtube.com slash the night sky prince. You can also find me on Twitter at night sky prince underscore because someone took the night sky prince. Class. I'll find you one day. Um, <laughs> and you can also find me on our Facebook group, Ultima Square Enix plus JRPGs. And just so everyone knows, all of these links on how to find these wonderful people will be handmade and easy to find in the description below of course i have to say it because some people forget it'll be below the fold so click see more and you'll get all of those links soldier first class introduce yourself tell us all about you hello everyone i'm soldier first class youtuber and part-time twitch streamer and i'm just here because i love final fantasy 7 remake and everything final fantasy so your content right now is like all or mostly remake content right uh, for the most part, yeah. I do throw in a couple videos here and there of different stuff like uh, Nier, that that franchise, uh, Dragon Ball content occasionally, but mostly uh, Final Fantasy and Final Fantasy VII Remake. Love, love, love. So we met for the first time at PAX East, and we actually met in person there. We didn't meet digitally. When did we meet digitally? Let's see. I remember when I first got my puppy, Coda. I had oh, made a yes! video. I had made a video with her in it, and you commented on it, and I was like, not going to lie, I was fanboying a little bit. So that's and, the uh, second video of yours that I watched. So there was one before that that I did watch, but yeah, your puppy, go see that video. That puppy's darn cute. Then we talked a little bit on Twitter, and then at PAX East we met, and it was incredible. So You like went to PAX East, like you decided to go like the day before you showed up, right, or something like that? Yeah, it was, so I got home from work early, and this is really the only way it was going to happen. I got home from work about a couple hours early, and I saw that the only flight available to Boston was, like, connecting, but it was leaving at, like, 2.30. And then I looked again, and it got delayed an hour. If that hour delay hadn't happened, I wouldn't have been in Boston. What? Yeah, I got my hotel as I was boarding the plane. And the PAX East tickets on the way to the airport. The airport wouldn't even let me buy the ticket online. I literally had to go to the airport during the hour delay, buy the ticket. I had no idea that I was even going to be able to go to PAX, but I wanted to get the PAX ticket beforehand. So, uh, yeah, it was a crazy, crazy That's mix of insane. things that had to, yeah, it had to fall perfectly or I wouldn't have made it. And it did. It was meant to be. For That's sure. The, the whole time he's like messaging me about all this and I'm like, dude, you are insane. I can't yeah. believe that you're actually going through. That's crazy person territory, but it paid off for yeah. you. I love hey, that. I, uh, given the choice, I'd do it again. Oh, OK. So how can people find you? Uh, you can find me on YouTube, uh, soldier underscore first class uh, with a one. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at sold first underscore class. That's S O L D one S T underscore class. Uh, and I am on other social medias like Instagram at soldier underscore first class. Uh, but basically that's about it. Awesome. So now let's go around and we'll start with you soldier. What is your favorite piece of content you've ever made? I think my favorite one is probably, I made a buster sword video a couple, probably a month ago where I talked about how the Buster Sword was more of a symbol of the fan base as a whole and what it means to everybody when you see it and just the, the memories and nostalgia that come from seeing that weapon. The Buster Sword, Cloud's most iconic weapon and arguably is least used. So how does a weapon that only lasts a few hours into the game strike such a chord in our hearts that it becomes one of the most iconic weapons in video game history? When they played the trailer at E3 2019 that was the first image that was the starting screen it said new game continue remake right next to the buster sword I mean it's iconic 
Well, and for me too, it's like, that's the first thing you see when you look at the case. Mm -hmm. It's the first weapon you see when you start playing the game. And it's, it's got a really powerful meaning behind it. And I think that's why it's so special. This is the impact of the Buster Sword, not the power that wielding it gives the player, but what it represents for the characters, what it means to the players themselves as they learn the truth about their hero. The Buster Sword is as much of Cloud's identity as it is the player. Yeah, I love that. So I'm gonna go watch that video. I haven't seen it yet, but obviously I'm gonna go watch it. Uh, and everybody else should too. Uh, Ryan, tell us about your favorite piece of content. Oh boy, it's really a tie between two videos and they're both they're both uh, very emotionally charged videos. Um, the first one would probably be the um, the Farewell to 15 video that at, right after Square Enix put out the episode Arden, mm -hmm. which was the last piece of major content for Final Fantasy 15. And that just, that hit me like right in the feelings because I had been waiting for that game. I was one of the people who watched the first reveal of that game back at E3 2006. So it had been a long time. Yeah. And so the conclusion to that was just, it made me feel a lot of things. And so that was almost like closing out a chapter of my life in a way. Final Fantasy 15 is finally over. It's a game that's allowed me to meet so many people and get so involved with the Final Fantasy community. I've met so many awesome friends. The community has created so many memories for me. So that was really huge. And then it's a tie between that and the one I just did on Final Fantasy VII Remake, talking about the 16 year journey leading up to uh, the actual remake coming out. And so long before that, there was so many fan struggles and people asking uh, Kitase and Nomura about, hey, when are you gonna start doing that remake? And so um, that long journey of just reading all those articles that would come out all the time, Kitase would tease something like, mm, maybe we'll do it. And, <laughs> and, and like, you know just going through all that and just fans going nuts because he was like maybe and like um building that up all the way to the point that we're at right now where we're getting remake stuff every time that you look up it's 2020 and we're almost there on that fateful april day it's truly been an incredible journey to get to this game and even now we still haven't completed the journey to final fantasy 7 remake just it's it's all the it's all the emotional emotionally charged nostalgia stuff that gets me yeah man i cry way too much on this youtube channel but i think i think the people feed on the tears they do they drink them <laughs> use them in sacrifices and such youtube viewers are terrifying <laughs> uh joy but tell yeah. us about your favorite piece of content um my favorite is actually everything that I put out during E3 because I've been going to E3 for so many years and this is the first year where I felt like this is the, one of the best E3s I've ever been in too because it was like not only was it all based around Final Fantasy mm -hmm. um, but it had other games I was really looking forward to and just everything about it and then the fact that I got to play the demo that day on the first day and then I was just I came home after everyone was like let's hang out I was like I gotta go home and film this video you guys <laughs> <laughs> and so it was like at 11 p.m. I think I put the video up at like midnight saying I got to play the demo you guys let me tell you everything about it and it was like everything that I would possibly say no one believed me like no one could believe you because I was like it's really that good it just made me fall in love with a game that's I'm already in love with I already invested hours of my life in and it's just so good. It's it I it's 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 as good as you would think it would be. I may or may not be trying to play it again like once every day. Don't judge me. I just need it in my life, you guys. Like you you do not expect something that you've been waiting for forever to be as good as it is. And like the gameplay and just like the voice acting, just everything about it was just like in awe and I was like I don't even know how to put it in the words, but this is this is what I played. I hope you believe me, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember like back in back in 2015, I have a YouTube video of me going to the AMC to watch the PlayStation conference. And that was the first day the remake was announced. I'm pretty excited because if they if they finally, finally announce a Final Fantasy VII remake, I will pass out in the theater. At the beginning, I was like, they're not going to announce the remake. They're not going to announce the remake. And then, like, there's, like, a title saying, like, a few happy moments later, oh, my God, you guys, <laughs> they announced the remake. <laughs> well, if I remember that that remake announcement trailer, and obviously it was a long time ago, so correct me if I'm wrong, but that trailer, like, specifically doesn't indicate that it's about Final Fantasy VII until the very end. 
Yeah, like the very last scene is you see Cloud walking with like the Buster yeah. sword in his back. And I was like, this is happening? Is this for real? <laughs> like, no, no, no way. Such an amazing yeah. moment. Let's move on to the discussion questions. One of the things that makes remakes so highly anticipated is that Final Fantasy VII is one of the most beloved games in all of Final Fantasy. I'd like to talk about what everyone's experience with Final Fantasy VII has been. Uh, let's talk about first, you know, when you first played it. So when I first started playing, I was six years old. Uh, I I could read a little bit in an advanced level, but not enough to like comprehend the the deeper plot elements. So I didn't get past the Midgar Zalem because I thought you had to fight it, like you had to fight it. And then I actually put the game down until I was in middle school, where I could actually like comprehend stuff. And ended up finishing the game, I think, when I was in about 7th or 8th grade. And it was one of the greatest adventures I'd ever been on. Wow. Yeah, same. Uh, I remember trying to just play the game generally at that age. And it was so hard because there was so much text being thrown at you. And having to read it all and then comprehend what the game was telling you to do. And unlike most games now, objectives aren't always clearly marked. There's not always Mm -hmm. like, oh, go here on the map. So a lot of the times, if you didn't know where to go or you weren't paying attention, you were just <laughs> you were just out of luck. Well, and that's and that why was a lot like, of people yeah. had the play guide, which right. is not a thing anymore. But back when back in our day, when there was no internet, <laughs> video game boomers. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> we're like all twenty. Um, uh, yeah, we had to have play guides, and I I so distinctly have heard so many stories about people pulling out their play guide and referencing certain things to to get the maximum experience from the game. And my parents weren't, weren't going to ex- expend the extra money for that, so I was on my own. <laughs> same same <laughs> here. Bigger, yeah. Really? Had to buy... we, already, we already bought you $50 for the game, so <laughs> you better figure I, it out. And that was, I, that was pretty much the gist of it. So I had to save my money, my birthday money and stuff, to even get it at six. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was the, the uh, struggle is real fortunate because I grew up with three older brothers. So uh, one of my brothers, since it came out in 97, I was approaching go- being homeschooled at the time because I was doing figure skating stuff. Uh, but <laughs> so, woo, it's a little bit, that's an um, intense story. We're going to talk about that later. <laughs> um, and so I got to watch my brothers play things in bits and pieces. So. Unfortunately, by the time I got to play it, uh, like a year later when I was fully in uh, homeschool, I knew what was happening. So I knew like where to go and what to do. Mm. So that was my version of the play guide, but it did not change like any emotional impact that the game had, like even knowing what it is, it's, which is weird because I hate spoilers now. But, <laughs> but growing up, like I always like always watch my brothers and they're like, oh, by the way, no, you can do this. You can do that. And I always had help going through, and through that way. But it was when I think one of my brothers had moved out at the time. And then like I had um, I was just at home because I was homeschooled. So I was like, I'm just going to play Final Fantasy seven because it's out and I'm ready to play it. And so I just played it for hours and hours and hours and hours. So that's why I was always maxed out my characters because I had so much time to do so. And so are you saying that the first experience you had with Final Fantasy seven was watching it, not playing mm-hmm. it? It was watching it. And did you have, I mean, did you watch enough of the story to be able to string things together and fall in love with the characters and such? Um, I definitely missed a lot of parts. I have had more of an impact when I physically played it yeah. um, versus like uh, watching it. I was only there for key moments because, you know, you get excited. Like right, I remember yeah. seeing the cutscene with Sephiroth walking through the fire through my brother playing it. I was like, who's that? <laughs> like, I want to talk. I want to see wow. who that person is. But then, like, when I got to play it, it all made sense. And then it just had a completely different impact from watching it. That's so cool. That is super interesting. One of the things that that I find fascinating about video games is a lot of the times they are very cinematic. And they are very watchable, even if you're not playing it yourself. Although most people would argue playing it yourself has a bigger impact. But even Final Fantasy VII, that long ago, that early on was one of the more cinematic games of its time. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It almost it at the time, like the most comparable thing, like it it really felt like the closest thing to playing a movie. Yeah. Like in nineteen ninety seven, a hundred percent. Well and it's hard to imagine now because it's like you look at it now and obviously it's from nineteen ninety seven, so it's it's aged 
you know, like a 1997 just game would. Just a little bit. But at the same time, if you look at it the way it was back then, it was like, I like to think of it like the way we're seeing the remake is how we saw the original in 1997. Hmm. And mm-hmm. it's just now in 2020 that they're actually bringing that to life. Isn't it crazy that your your brain fills in all the gaps? Yeah. Like, it's yeah. like your brain does the work when the media doesn't if it's engaging and captivating if it's not you're looking at it and you're like well there's a bunch of random polygons arranged in some sort of order but it's not pretty to look at but if if the second that you get engaged in what's happening on screen your imagination kicks in and i think that's one of the reasons why it's probably a lot more enjoyable to play it again having fallen in love with it when it was new. Mm -hmm. That's an experience I didn't get because I didn't play it back in the day. I'm doing my first playthrough right now. And yeah, it's aged. (laughs) (laughs) I I don't I don't have that that nostalgia connection to it. And while I can rationally say, wow, they managed to do a lot with the limitations that they had. I'm looking at it at a futuristic lens. I'll never have the love for it that you three do kind of jealous but honestly i think it's i think it's great that new people are getting into it and that's why i think final fantasy 7 is so timeless because like you said you've never played it before until most recently but you are playing it it is something that's going it's obviously with you know with you it's having a very major impact on your life without ever having played it and now that you are playing it you're gonna get that the reason why we're so in love with it and i think that's great i also think that there's something to be said for When I say, um, you know, it doesn't look great, it hasn't aged well, that's me coming from the first couple hours of gameplay when all you are really engaged in is how it looks and how it plays. You're not really engaged in the whole story. And I think that a lot of, as content creators, we could definitely talk about how nobody falls in love with the game from the very first second, you develop a love for it and then a deeper love for it over time as you play the game, as you see the ending and the beginning pays off. So I think as as I go through Final Fantasy VII, I'll finally be able to say, this game is timeless. This game is still worth playing. This game has so many great elements to it, but I'm just not there yet because you have to develop that. Everyone has to develop it for themselves. And I know a lot of people are going to be angry with me for saying that. <laughs> I think a lot of people always come to my chat because they know how I feel about Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy as a series has just been a part of my life since the beginning. Aging myself, we're the same age. Uh, uh, but um, the, everyone always comes to my like Twitch chats and they're like, I'm sorry, but I've never played this. I was like, that's fine. There's still time. You can p- literally play any Final Fantasy game. And they're like, which one should I start? I was like, you can start with any of them. I was like, they're all different stories and they're all just magical, magical, just storytelling and everything is different. And you love everything separately. That's why when people always ask which one's your favorite, it's like you have like your favorite, but then it's like, I love every single one for completely different reasons. Like that's they all have their own little colors. thing. When people are like, what's your favorite color? I can be like, yeah, it's purple, but like all the colors are nice. Yeah. (laughs) Like some days I really am into the color peach. (laughs) I love that analogy. Um, And you know what, though? That's honestly like what you mentioned, though, is honestly why I'm so happy that Final Fantasy VII Remake is finally happening because it is such a timeless story. And so many people have heard that Final Fantasy VII is the greatest game of all time, however you want to quantify that. Um, But um, looking back at the older graphics and the lack of voice acting and all the other things that would put people off, um, those things aren't barriers anymore. There's no wall, there's no ceiling anymore for um, to keep you inside or make you not want to play the game now. That brings up a really interesting dynamic because a lot of you guys did play it way back in the day. And I say guys is a gender neutral term, but if you'd prefer I call you all dudes, that's fine too. Dudes is fine. <laughs> dudes is fine? Great, dudes. I'm, I'm Californian. Everybody's yeah. a dude, okay? So how has your relationship with Final Fantasy VII changed over time? Because this game did come out 23 
years ago. That is a long time. And I was talking in an interview about this recently. Art cannot exist outside of the time that it was created. And every time that you re-experience it, it means something new to you contextually from when you're experiencing it in that moment. So I would love for you guys to talk a little bit about how it develops, how, how, your, how your experience with it has changed. First off, that's the deepest thing I ever heard. So, <laughs> secondly, um, wow, I can, I, can, I can tell you pretty precise um, how it's affected me. Um, before, like Final Fantasy, I mean, it's always been a huge obsession for me, but now it's more of this thing that connects me to other people. I think I particularly realized that when I was doing a whole bunch of content for Final Fantasy 15 at the time and just realizing how many friends that I made while just going on this content creation journey that just just bonding over the game, over waiting for the game to come out in the first place, uh, waiting for the DLCs to come out and playing through all that and just discussing the story. And so it's really interesting how a mostly single player game series can still find a way to unite people. And I think that's just that shift has been um, the greatest impact on how I view the games now as this great unifier mm -hmm. versus um, how I first started, where it was just the game that I was obsessed with. Well, and that that to add to that, I mean, that's how all four of us are here together right now is bonding over Final Fantasy seven and Final Fantasy seven remake. Yeah, we would have never we'd have never met. Yeah, no strangers I on mean, the street. It, it, and it's so interesting that we've all come to it in our very different ways. Yeah, about a year and some change. I started my channel and I messaged Night Sky Prince here and it's <laughs> a year and some change later. And now he's one of my best friends. All, all all because of final fantasy 7 like that's that one thing like he said that one thing was like the foot in the door and now i've you know we've got another mutual friend that you know we're all this big friend group and it's all because we love this game and we love the series so it is it is that big connector that even though it's a single player game or most of the series is single player uh that we've all come together just because of this franchise. And then we start to learn about each other and our other interests and stuff that may be similar, but it was just that one foot in the door we needed to become really good friends. And, you know, I think that's what separates like games from other medium is because like when you play a game, it's almost like a life experience that you had, mm -hmm. like, because you interacted with it on a level that you don't necessarily do with maybe mu like movies or music. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, it almost becomes like uh, like something that you experienced. And it's easier to relate to another person like when you have that exact same experience being in the same moment at the same time. Yeah, I think it I, I think it activates your brain in a different way. And I'm really excited to see with the future of, of video games, what we learn about interacting with content in that way. Um, mm. And I, I think that, that that's another reason why certain video games are so loved is, is because if a video game handles the concept of it being a video game properly, there is an element of choice. There is an element mm. of every player is going to play their own way. And I think that that's something that video game developers are really realizing now. I mean, I'm going to bring it back to this because this is one of my favorite franchises is the Zelda franchise. Mm. So for, you know, originally with the with the older Zeldas, you could you had this this world just plopped on your screen and you could explore it however you wanted and and get certain items whenever you wanted um and then as it developed as they were refining what a narrative means in video game with ocarina of time and majora's mask and and so on and so on all the way up through skyward sword they were sort of like okay well let's have them play the way we want them to it was very linear there was a lot of complaints of hand holding mm -hmm. then they realized that every player is going to play it their own way. That's what pe that's what players want right now at least. And so Breath of the Wild comes out and people are just like this is what a Zelda game should be because every player gets to bring their own something to it and connect with it in their own way. 
I was never, never going to collect 900 Korok seeds. <laughs> no, that's ridiculous. But my mom loved that. That was her favorite thing. She was like, I'm going to collect all 900 of them. That's how I have fun with this game. And so I think that uh, I think that Final Fantasy VII was a game that let you do that when a lot of other games weren't letting you do that. I, I think that that's one of the ways that it wormed its way into people's hearts. That's what I love right now. Currently, there's a lot of people replaying it and some close friends of mine that have never played Final Fantasy before. And so they've been streaming it on Twitch. And I was just like, I have to be there for your playthrough. And the one I'm have to be there for because they avoided all spoilers for 23 years. I don't know how, but they did. Wow. <laughs> uh, and so I was like, what? I was modding the chat to make sure like they didn't get the, the oh, major spoilers nice. of the game. But then it's like there was also people that kept saying, oh, no, you have to do this for the materia. And I was like, look, you guys, the beauty thing about RPG games is that they're role playing games is that you can decide how you want to play it and everyone can play it differently. And so me seeing how other people play where I grew up playing it a certain way, it's like, oh, I didn't know this work. Like one of my good friends was just like, oh, I'm going to mimic this thing. And I'm in my head, like watching the stream. I was like, that's not going to work. And I was like, oh my God, it's it. it turned oh to my God. I had no idea. <laughs> and so it's just like seeing everybody's different experience with it. And then I love just seeing everybody's first impression of all of the things. Mm -hmm. Like someone else I know just beat it. And they're just like, this is the greatest thing ever. And I was like, you're one of my, you're one of my <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. So Whoa. I'm just really, I, I'm really excited. Like I know a lot of people messaged me and said, they're like, oh, this is going to be my first Final Fantasy because of like your passion for it. So now I want to see why you're so excited for it and what it is. And I was like, I'm so jealous. This is your first one. Oh. <laughs> I want to experience that all over again. But I'm just, I can't wait to see what, how they, how they react and how they enjoy the characters. Cause even though I have my favorite Final Fantasies, there's, the characters in seven are just just perfect. Like every time it's like, oh, yeah, I love six. Like six is amazing. And like Locke is fantastic. But there's just so much world in Final Fantasy seven that kit that just beats every single other Final Fantasy. Like just even if you don't like the game as a whole, uh, the characters, I don't know how you cannot like the characters in the game or the world. Yeah, I honestly love getting those comments, too, where they're like, this is my first Final Fantasy. And I'm like, yes, please, yeah. please play it. There's there is there is such a joy in experiencing something for the first time. I think a lot of people really really want that experience bottled, which is mm -hmm. conceptually just really fascinating to me. But um but really interesting as it pertains to a game being remade, right? So <laughs> so this game originally came out in 97. Now they're remaking it. And they call it remake instead of similar words like remaster or such. There have been lots of ways that developers have reused content, but this is an actual remake. Now that we're so close to launch and we've seen so much, we can kind of talk about where we see similarities and where we see differences and how interesting that is, that it's a remake and that some parts are shot for shot redone with modern technology and some things are a little bit different. Are there some moments that have that have really stuck out to you? Mine was definitely in the demo. Uh it's a, it's such a minor little thing, but when I the, when I first saw it, it was just impactful. It's like right after you do the bombing mission and you blow up the bomb and then they do like the little ca security cameras of Shinra be like, "Yeah, blow it up." It's just like that was not really seen and like to see that I was like like I know it's like very small because we are you already know like later down in the story what actually happens but just like seeing that right at the beginning I'm like well that's neat like that's a nice little like detail that it didn't need to happen but it was really cool to see and mm -hmm. so that's what I'm really looking forward to see like those little things that are changing and just uh, expanding on the world like mm -hmm. that you just never got to see but then you just imagined what it would be mm -hmm. and so just hearing that and then obviously the fact that we don't have to read <laughs> what they're saying is going to be completely different impact. It, like it's a completely different impact. Yeah. This, it's like... this game has voice acting. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> and then I'll, a lot of people always ask me like, what are you most excited for? Like what scenes are you most excited for? I was like, to be very honest, I'm excited to see the character development because we never got to hear them talk 
as you're walking around like doing all these things i want to hear like their banter because even hearing like cloud and barrett's banter at the very beginning of the bombing mission so like, good you clearly right see, yeah, so you good, clearly yeah. see their <laughs> attitudes and you clearly see that cloud's like not interested and all this stuff like that and it's like you feel that emotion and you can clearly tell that that is other than just like reading text like i don't like you i'm just here for a job yeah and stuff like that. i think one of the interviews specifically said um, that there's going to be less left to the imagination because they are filling in some gaps. But also, like you said, voice acting is going to just naturally fill in some gaps where things are going to be more explicit because now technology allows for it. And so there is going to be a different experience in that way. And some people are going to love it and some people are not going to love it. What are mm -hmm. your thoughts on that? So I was actually thinking about that too. Um, I think the moment like when it first hit me about how much voice acting and uh, the thing that honestly doesn't get enough credit is facial animation. Mm. It's facial animation in itself. Like For someone's sure. face tell, tells a whole story, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I believe it was the TGS trailer. And uh, there was the moment where Aerith like walks out in her dress. The camera then goes back to like Cloud's face and you can tell that he's like, whoa, she looks hot. But like you see like like you start like you notice like the details like in his face and it's like before they had to use exaggerated block arm animations <laughs> they had to go like this yes. or they had to do like other stuff in order every to every time barrett's angry he smashes something with his big old right. chunky arm now he doesn't have to do that <laughs> there's yeah. like that whack sound effect yeah <laughs> <laughs> right and so they basically like take in like all that and then you don't have to do like the over exaggerated movements or anything like that. And they also don't have to like sort of go out of their way to awkwardly express like so certain subtle emotions like that. Like that face that Cloud made there in that scene, like expressing that through text is like very difficult in a subtle way. And so just that they have that there so that you can just look at the character and how their face looks, their facial expression, that's mm -hmm. huge, man. That's, that's super so huge. True. I think yeah. well, one of my favorite I, moments of that exact of that exact thing is when um, Andrea Rodea dips Cloud in the transformation <laughs> scene. As soon as Andrea Rodea says perfection, Cloud like his eyelids droop a little bit and his mouth droops open just the <laughs> tiniest bit. Like he's like, I'm into this. <laughs> like there's that moment of like he's enamored it, as like not feeling and like whatever don't care cloud and mr don't care mm -hmm. as much as he is that like there's this moment where he also gets caught up in the romance of it in the like the like amazing transformation process and like that right there would never have come across without that facial animation 100 mm, percent. love that for me, the voice acting does that, like where you guys were talking about the animations and how facial animations show that, the tone of voice also. Like when you watch the trailers and you see like the instance where Avalanche is like questioning what they're doing, you can hear the the shakiness in their voice. Like you can mm. hear how they feel at that moment of what did they just do? Or, you know, when, when you go to the scene where in the trailer where Tifa's at the bar and she's talking to Cloud and she just looks at him and gives him like this subtle you know are we doing the right thing mm. but you can also hear it in her voice and it's like it's so incredible that you can hear those things when you had to read into that in the original game you you did and, or you didn't though right because when you're mm -hmm. reading sometimes you take it one way and sometimes you take it another way i mean one exactly. of the things why emojis are so popular is because i could say omg i'm dying and you could get that text and actually be afraid that i'm dying but if it has a, a laughing emoji after it, it's like, oh, you're, you're dying because that's so funny. Right. The ability to add yeah. context. Yes. That's what it is. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Voice acting adds that element that's missing in text. For that reason, though, too, there's also going to be these people who are maybe miffed about some things sure. <laughs> because, because they read it their own way. Yeah. yeah. And they, they interpret it to be that way. Not knowing that it's not really that the developers changed anything or did anything. It's always been intended like to be like that. But you read it like that, and then that was your interpretation. That's also why books in general are fascinating because everyone like reads the same book and then everyone walks away completely mm -hmm. different. Like <laughs> completely like it's like everyone read a different book. Oh, and absolutely. I guess that's why they have they have uh 
uh, like book clubs. So, <laughs> but especially yeah. when you talk about things like the fact that it's a global franchise, it is experienced all over the world, and especially with localization, I imagine that that is a very challenging job to be yeah. able to translate, to be able to know both languages so well that you can translate not only the explicit meaning but the subtleties and sometimes you have to make a choice and that choice is going to be the right choice to some people and the wrong choice to some people and that Mm -hmm. is really hard and that's what makes something like this making a video game I think that's what makes it art as opposed to a science it is it is an art and there's a huge amount of interpretation that comes out of it from the makers and then there's another huge level of interpretation that comes out from the players Mm. it's so so interesting and that's why we can talk about it for 800 hours (laughs) (laughs) for sure that's true any other comments on the similarities versus differences of of final fantasy 7 versus remake I do have one thing. Yeah. So the Sephiroth thing. From the, the beginning. The Sephiroth thing. When, when you see the opening movie and that little hint of one-winged angel plays, oh, so right? Until <laughs> till Aerith runs away. That is like, I love that because that's something subtle that we didn't get in the original. Like they're foreshadowing. So like in the demo, when you go to set the bomb and Cloud has that moment where it's his head hurts. He hears those chosen by the planet, and then the the, the little black feather falls. It's just like perfect. And I, I, a lot of people are going to be like, "Well, you know, Sephiroth wasn't there in Midgar," but I think with this new telling of it, it's like you have to have him in there. And the way they're handling it, the foreshadowing and the music and stuff like that, that difference for me is just phenomenal. Yeah, I think it mm-hmm. definitely helps, uh, at least for me, Aerith a lot. Because you meet her and but you get an idea like who she is, like like that she has a certain ability, but you never really it doesn't for me, it didn't click until after a while in the story. But then now you can see like with the whole added element where like in the trailer where she grabs Cloud and then like you see all the like ghosty figurey things like you actually can tell now that she has this ability and with the ancients and all that stuff like that way early on and then you know that she is definitely a key factor so it helps uh, to me it helps like the remake is helping Aerith uh a lot in that aspect i think it's helping jesse the most man oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> a lot wow of people thought jesse was a boy i, I was like a lot really of people thought, thought that apparently <laughs> wow i i'm not sure how they picked that up but yeah jesse uh <laughs> oh man jesse in the demo i i immediately um fell in love she's <laughs> so well written so well voiced she's mm-hmm. perfect god erica is such a dream yes please tell her I, uh, that i said that she's doing a phenomenal job because she yeah. really is I will. Yeah, I watched- she's she's definitely doing an amazing job as jesse she really yeah. watched the, the she, stream she you did with people her people fall in love with a character that was not a character even really before barely yeah exactly like but you immediately like fall in love with her yeah. Just from how well she's voiced and written. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. She's got a great sense of humor, which is what I love. Yes. Yeah, my, one of my favorite things to do in the demo, I, I actually uploaded it, was to try and trigger so many voice lines as possible. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. The funniest thing is when you're doing the laser things, I kept running into it. She's like, wow, you're such a masochist, aren't you? I was like, <gasps> <laughs> So I just kept repeating for different voice lines and they're all fantastic. So that's like one of the things I'm going to do when I play through it. It's like, what else can I trigger? Oh, yeah, yes. that, was, that was great. It's just like, so that's what Cloud's into. <laughs> <laughs> We're all content creators and we all are making a ton of content right now around Final Fantasy VII Remake. Let's talk a little bit about what that's like on the content creator side. Let's pull back the curtain a little bit. How has that been for you guys? Let me just let me just ask you. Let me just talk with you guys as fellow content creators. What how's it how's it going? Boy. So I'm the type of person <laughs> where I wake up like frequently during the night. And Square Enix, for whatever reason, loves to upload stuff at like 3 a.m. or like it's 4 a.m. It's a Japanese time thing, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that yeah. why? Because sure they, they do it even for, yeah. for like Western like viewers too. That's and just so, a guess. I don't know, but it, it I mean it you're probably is. right, but 
anyway, they, they put it up at that time. And like sometimes I wake up, check my phone, see what time it is. And I'll just like see like all these Twitter for notifications at Night Sky Prince, at Night Sky Prince, at Night Sky Prince. And I'm like, oh. have you seen this? <laughs> yeah. Stop what you're doing. I, mean, I, I was like, oh, I want it like three or four more hours. And then I get out of bed, <laughs> tired, and I walk over to my computer and I'm like, it's time to make some content. That must be Dude. so nice that you can just wake up out of bed, <laughs> shuffle your hair, and be ready for content. This girl um, needs an hour of getting ready time. Oh, you don't think I have to get pretty too? <laughs> You're naturally pretty. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, so um, yeah, it's just getting out of bed uh, when I'm not expecting it is probably <laughs> the hardest part. Mm -hmm. That's fair. That's fair. They mm. always tend to drop exciting things like the demo in the trailer when oh, I literally cannot do anything <laughs> about it. The Whether oh it's God. like I just was... got to PAX or I just got back from PAX or I'm on vacation for the first time in two years. Always content. Oh, yeah. Immediately. I've had to like that. make videos when I was like out of state. I had to make a video at a convention one time. <laughs> um, it was the reaction to the VGA's trailer because I was like, mm. Square didn't say anything about the VGA trailer. So I'm just going to go. And then oh, that morning really. they're like, be sure to watch the VGA's because we got a trailer. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, crap. And so I have to use like a laptop and you can watch the video still. And like I have like all my friends behind me because I'm like, dude, we're already here at the oh, con. I watched a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, y'all just come over here and we're just going to all do it. And you guys can be in like one of my videos. And so I had like all my friends together and we were just doing like a reaction. Scene. <laughs> yeah. See, it's funny that you say that about them, like dropping it at the most inopportune times. Because like when I was on my way back from PAX, they... I think it was there was like a rumor going around they were going to release the demo the next day. So I'm in the airport in, I believe, Dallas, Fort Worth, and I'm about ready to get on the plane. It's probably 30 minutes before the plane's about to leave. I film a video in the airport waiting lobby oh my God. with people around me. I mean, it's on my phone. I make the thumbnail real quick on my phone and I uploaded it in the airport. Is it Fast. so awkward to make content when people are like all milling about you? I never like know what it's like to like vlog in the wild. Here's my thing about it. I figure I can either sit there and be like real nervous about it and care what everybody thinks. And then like kind of have that affect my video or I can just do it and not mm. care. Because like, well, I mean, I'm about to leave on a plane. I'll never see any of these people again in my life. What's it matter? Right. Fast forward. That's fair to about a couple days ago and I'm sitting in my car at work and I don't remember what they announced. I think it was, uh, uh, I don't remember what it was. Oh, anyway, it was about the copies leaking. Yes. That's it was the it was. copies leaking. I'm sitting in my car at work. I take my badge off. I set it on the thing and I just film and I'm like, I make the thumbnail on my phone again. And like, I'm just like, whatever it's content, you know, like That's I feel like dedicated. my, I mean, I feel like my audience is going to watch it. You know, it's I I would rather get the content out about the remake and get people aware of what's going on than worry about my instant quality. Like now, that's so interesting because because one of the things I've noticed about about you, Ryan and Soldier, is that you are very news oriented and very like you got like you guys say, like a trailer drops at 3 a.m. You got to make content immediately, like no ifs, ands or buts. It's got to go up. So you guys are very like breaking news style content about remake, whereas Joy, your content is a little bit more like me, where, you know, we make content as soon as we can, but but mostly we're just like excited about things. Yeah. We're I not think... like breaking news. Everyone is talking about this, but we're like, this is what we're passionate, and enthusiastic about. Yeah, I think that because there's so many news channels, but I always now like since I got word of both of them, I'm almost like, if you ever want to know any Final Fantasy news, go to them. If you just want to keep <laughs> out, just hang out with me, I was like, because I'm not going to talk about like the news situation. Yeah, but I the demo story was funny because I I was I usually wake up in the middle of the night. And so one night I, I fell asleep and I was I fell asleep while watching a stream. And then it was like at one in the morning and I woke up and I was like, I was half waking up and I hear Barrett's voice. And I was like, <laughs> did another trailer come out? Like, that's weird. And then I like look at my computer. I was like, are they playing the game right now? And I was like, 
like, no, 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 no. And I look on Twitter and they do all that stuff. And I like quickly, I was like, no, I got work in the morning. I got to go back to sleep. And I was like, or <laughs> I downloaded it. And I streamed at like one in the morning. I've never done that. Oh and I was like, gosh. this is Final Fantasy. I got to wake up and do this. I was like, I don't even know if anyone's up. I didn't care if anyone was up. I was like, I have to document that I'm playing this game right now. So I like, I streamed it for the hour that it was the demo was. And then I was like, all right, let me edit it. And then uploaded it. But that was like, this game not only made it so I cried for the first time on YouTube with the trailer Aww. reaction. I was like, oh. and then after that, it's just been downhill. I just cry at everything at this Same. point. Same, cry at everything all the time. <laughs> but then it was just like the fact that I wake up at one in the morning knowing I have to go to work. I still went to work that day. Wow, <laughs> good then, for you. <laughs> I know. And then, um, and then just doing all that stuff at one in the morning, just not caring because I just, I just can't wait. I even, I'd like, and that's the other thing. I was like, I'm fortunate that like my boss is okay with that sort of stuff. I was like, I, cause I'm working from home right now, but then I was like, just so you know, I'm still taking off next week that I put on the calendar. They're like Final Fantasy. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so I'll be back Tuesday. Cause I already requested off Friday and that Monday to like play for the weekend. And so now I'm like, yeah, I'm still having it off. But if you need me, I won't be available. Good. <laughs> boundaries what's important priorities yes i like of it <laughs> uh so so as we're all making content about final fantasy 7 remake one of the things that will naturally come up is that not everyone is going to like everything i'm sure that's already come up for some of you guys i know how i have been handling things like that how have you guys been handling things like that so for me like you know, me and Prince see a lot of negative stuff in our comments, mm -hmm. and I think everybody does. I think it's just natural. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I try to, because I think a lot of stuff comes from a place of misinformation or mm -hmm. lack of information. So when I see somebody, you know, talking about, well, this is why I don't like this, I try to explain to them that, hey, you know, this is what has actually been said by the developers. But then you get people that are obviously just way out there that don't mm -hmm. care what you have to say so you know you tend to just ignore that type of thing yeah because it's only going to stress you out so Actually, i tend to I like, like that strategy you stick with the facts when the facts are relevant and when clearly someone's just having a bad day you just move on yeah you manifest whatever you put energy into yes and so mm -hmm. i i realized that quite early on you well and differentiating between the trolls and who are actually having questions too is the hard part yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. also another thing that too comes with experience. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely think you two, uh, uh, Soldier and Ryan, have different feedback or qu comments because you are breaking news and all that stuff. Most of the things is just like that I get or like, or I don't like this game or whatever. I was like, that's fine. It's like, it's not made for it. Probably wasn't for you. It wasn't your thing because I don't like every game I play. It just wasn't for me. But if someone else likes it, then that's for them to like. Like, I'm not going to be mad because you didn't <laughs> like it or anything like that. Wouldn't that like be that. silly? <laughs> It's like, it's I can't so believe silly you didn't to like be angry it. for no reason. <laughs> yeah. And so it's just like now, like when people try and talk to me, because there's, there's a lot of rumors, there's always rumors and stuff like that. That's why I always point to them because it's like you, they, they are literally re only reporting on things that are factually said. So yeah. uh, as a, um, when I stream on Twitch, when people are like, oh, did you hear? I was like, did it come from Square Enix? Did it come from like the <laughs> actual people? If so, do not talk about that in the chat because we're only talking about things that are um, presented by the developers or the publishers. And I was like, I try to like train them never to come to me like with rumors. And that goes for like any medium that like I'm, I'm into. I love like, that. No, no rumor spills, just straight from the people that are making it. That's how I'm treating spoilers right now. Spoilers don't even exist to me. <laughs> what are spoilers i don't know i don't know everything that i see is the first time i've ever seen anything i think we also like being breaking news i think we also get maybe more of a negative front against us sometimes because it's like the knee-jerk reaction to that news if you made a video that's like an essay or something you're probably going to get more positive comments i think in that than you are something that people are reacting to yes and that's very valid is that when someone leaves a negative comment a lot of the times it's about them and not about you absolutely yeah yep. sometimes, sometimes they're just had a bad day at work that's right and, and then this guy gets on youtube and he's just like saying some stuff i don't want to hear this guy so go always get go on, on youtube yeah that night sky prince guy so <laughs> comment section leaves something nasty for him <laughs> So Feels we've good. been covering Final Fantasy VII Remake content, well, some of us, since 2015. It's a long time. It's been five years. 
Now, the question remains, considering this will be a multi-part experience, of which I know nothing. Honestly, they, they tell me nothing. Um, but they're calling it multi-part, so we're calling it multi-part. <laughs> um, what are our plans for covering Remake past the release date of April 10th? Wow. We've had, we've had a five-year journey before this. The release date is in what, 10 days? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> the release date's in 10 days. So what's, what's then? What are our plans? What are our oh. hopes and dreams? We gonna play the game? Capital I'm definitely oof. going to um, document my entire because I don't have a platinum trophy on my PlayStation right now, and so if I, I made it a point, I almost had all the trophies in a different game. I was like, no, 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 I can't get this last one. It has to be for Final Fantasy VII, Perfect. and that's the only platinum trophy I'm gonna have on my PlayStation. I love and that. so I'm gonna document everything about that, and just because I've never done it before, and just diving deep, and I'm gonna try and do it without like help, like trying to look like, where is this like chocobo yeah. or something? I don't know. I wanna see if I can figure out all the trophies. And so I definitely wanna, that'll be a long journey. That's I was like, awesome. we'll beat it once, but then like throughout the year until mm -hmm. whenever, like, oh, so this is where me grinding out to get this trophy right now and stuff like that. I love that. All right, um, my plans uh, after doing the remake, uh, Let's Plays, uh, challenge playthroughs. That's going to be a lot of huge stuff while we're waiting for the second part. Uh, in the meantime, Square Enix also has a bunch of games that I'm excited to cover. Like they just announced um, Near Replicant. So I'm going to be doing that. And just, um, I'm staying loyal to Square. I love them. Basically, just mixing in like Final Fantasy VII remake content, keeping that spirit going. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe making some video essays on what things I want to see, what things I want to see improved, especially from the first game to the second. That's my plan. Yeah. Some video essays. Mm -hmm. Interesting to see what you cover. I'll be watching. It's good that I, uh, I'm glad that I sound good when I'm talking. I can make <laughs> myself sound intelligent. When you actually like read those essays behind the scene, like I spit for it, there's like a thousand typos. And usually I'm trying to figure out like what I even meant. Like <laughs> at the time. All content yeah. creators know that life. Yeah. We we I all write do. scribbles. <laughs> and then I'm like, I think that's that word. Oh uh, sure. Uh-huh. Uh, what about you, soldier? So I'm pretty similar to what uh Night Sky Prince is doing. I'm gonna be doing let's plays, um probably deep diving into some of the story elements that we get Love because that. obviously there's there's differences. So I like to to really go in depth with story stuff. Um, and well, analysis sure videos. Love that. There's lots of story stuff that I would love to talk about, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh, actually one of the the main reasons I, I wanted to have you guys on my channel is is particularly because there are going to be some things that I would have covered about remake had I not of course been privy to some information that other people aren't and so there are some things that I cannot talk about there are some things that I simply cannot make videos about because one of the things I love to do is do deep dives and analysis and one of my favorite pieces of content I have ever made was a theory video about The Last of Us Part 2 and so I, I would have loved to do that for remake but I can't because I know too much <laughs> and so I'm, I'm relying on you guys to do that analysis for me and to share what you guys see and the patterns that that are obvious to you. And then I'll just watch behind the scenes and not comment on anything. Right. <laughs> so then you can watch in the back of your head. You'd be like, that is so wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suckers. That's what I like. Yeah. Uh, I like to see you all suffer. <laughs> good to know. I'll, good to know. I'll be critiqued behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's a really interesting topic because a lot of you guys have kind of been in contact with the devs at Square Enix, whether it's the marketing team, social media person, they're all fabulous. I love them all so much. Mm, they're um, great. They, right, I know, they're amazing. Um, but that, that's that's something that's that's really interesting because you guys must know that people watch your content, that like the d devs are watching your content. Uh, I it is scary. It is scary. <laughs> yeah. I know for I know for a fact they are because I got told they are. Yeah. And that, like the crazy part about that is, is like you're like, I think when I started this channel, that was the goal was mm. to get Square Enix to watch me and to get them to notice me. Mm. And now that I know they do, it's like maybe the it's it's like you achieved a goal you finally wanted to achieve, but now there's so much pressure because mm. now, you know, they see everything mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're like, did I say something wrong? 
did I you like give a wrong opinion? Am I like, it's so much pressure, but it's a good pressure. I well, love and it. And one of the things is that you, at least you two gentlemen are, are fact-based channels a lot of the time. Whereas that can be wrong. <laughs> if you, if you put out wrong factual information, that's unfortunate, but that's why I really like to watch either like the trailer reactions or story analysis or opinion pieces for that exact reason is that can't be wrong. That's just right. you. That's just your um, opinion, your personality, your enthusiasm, your passion. That could never be wrong. And that's mm-hmm. the kind of stuff we're watching. We're not watching breaking news. Square Enix <laughs> released a press release saying X, Y, Z. Yeah, we know. They put it out. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're not watching yeah. that content. They're watching the content that comes from your heart and your emotion. Mm-hmm. And I think that the first time a developer of a game watched my content and said that they were watching my content, it really put things into perspective for me of like, I'm not I, I can't just bash something. Mm-hmm. I have to understand that, that it's coming from a place of, of love and passion on, on someone's end. And the person who made that is out there. Yeah, I like I'm super self-conscious about hurting the developer's feelings. <laughs> I know, so, so am I. Yeah, but I, I always I always think about that before I actually put out like any type of critique hmm. that, um, hey, like. I'll, but I also want to be straightforward with them yeah. too. I don't want yeah. to beat around the bush and, and like and not tell them the too, feedback. By right. the way, they do right. want your actual opinion because a lot of the right. times when you make something and there's a genuine critique for it, we're looking for that too. Right. You know, they yeah. they want to know how to make their games better. What yeah. they don't want to hear is comments about lazy devs and yeah. Um, yeah. Obscene, like rude things like that. They want feedback that they can actually go back and say, okay, now I got some good feedback and improve yeah. my game construction uh, criticism and i yeah. have actually heard from square enix that they're they actually care about that i actually haven't met any of the game dev team as far as like or animators or or modelers i, I don't really know how any of that works but um if, if i'm voice acting and someone is saying wow she doesn't sound like how i imagined her in her head in my head she sucks i can't do anything with that but if yeah. someone right. says oh, she she sounds like her tone is a little off here or she sounds a little monotonous or whatever. Like, I can actually take that and be like, yeah, I agree. I could have put a little bit more blah, blah into this line or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a difference. Yeah. Know, exactly. Knowing what feedback to take is more important than the feedback itself almost. Yes. Yeah. That's one of the things I definitely want to do as just a, just a content creator in general is that there's always people like, well, this is trash. I'm like, but why? Why is it trash? Like you, you can't come to me and say like, oh, this is this is not good without having an exact reason. So I've had people that say like, oh, this is trash. I was like, okay, but why? Explain to me why you don't like it. I was like, I like it, so it's not, it's not my opinion. It's not going to mm. change. But like, why is what made you not like it? And so until they give me that, then I'm like, oh, <laughs> whatever you say. <laughs> like I don't know. It's just like you, there has to be a reason why you don't like it. So that's that's what I'm hoping people. But sometimes there isn't, and then we just yeah. get we just leave that thought from our brain, and we just we pretend it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this will oh. be the last question that I ask you guys because we are running short on time, mm. and it's going to be the fact that this game is coming out in ten days, and you know we've gotten some demo, which is awesome, but most of what we've seen from this game has been in trailers and there has been lucky me lucky all of us like eight nine trailers so many trailers right Mm -hmm. six i don't know yeah lost count (laughs) around there yeah so many trailers so i wanted to ask you all each what is your favorite remake trailer and why and it has to be your number one favorite no number one and twos or i like all the colors of the rainbow no favorite remake trailer and while you guys think about it i'll start my favorite remake trailer was obviously tgs because i feel like a lot of the trailers for Aerith in the beginning were based on her sort of archetype of how people see her as the flower girl 
They were a little bit one note, you know, one of the major lines in one of the trailers was help me. Help me. Right? Mm -hmm. But in the TGS trailer, you actually got to see her like playful and vibrant side. And that trailer blew me out of the water. I was I was so excited to see her that way because even in voice acting her, you don't get to visually see her that way. And so when everything was done and polished and beautiful for a trailer, there was there's just nothing like that experience for me. So that was my favorite trailer. Mine was the first trailer for E3 2015. That okay. was the best trailer for me. Uh, probably one of the best trailers I've ever seen. Because in the whole course of the trailer, they did not want to say Final Fantasy VII. They just literally said, you already know what it is. And that was the biggest testament to how big and how impactful Final Fantasy VII is, is that they don't have to say the word. They flash you a logo, mm -hmm. they flash you a remake, and you instantly know. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I, that I loved about that trailer was the narration. The narration was not like just like story stuff. It was like them directly speaking to the fans yeah. like when they use metaphors like the age of silence talking about how yeah we know we kind of promised it for like a long time it's been coming and metaphors like that like them just speaking directly to the fans is like then the fans are just emotional and crying and it's just like them coming over and patting us on the back being like yeah it's happening i'm gonna go and say my favorite trailer is also the tgs trailer for two reasons one i was actually in tokyo when i was watching it what? i i so i was on twitter someone's like someone i was like they said they announced it i was walking down the street we were walking back to our airbnb at the time and then everyone's like oh i need to go get some water i was like that's fine go ahead and i'm like watching <laughs> on my phone my friend recorded me doing this sitting there crouching in the streets of tokyo like oh, i can't believe this is happening this is real but why i love it so much is because leading up to this trailer like we saw like the the dynamic trio we saw them we saw tifa at e3 we saw all this stuff but this is when you realize like oh we're seeing like more stuff like we got reno we get like oh yeah by mm -hmm. the way there's turks in this game like there's just, yeah it just started that was the that first was the start. trailer for summons too yeah and it just it was the start of expanding of what you're actually going to be playing mm -hmm. versus like you remember these characters these characters are cool these characters are awesome oh by the way you remember this world and yeah. then like from there it just started expanding upon uh beyond that so that's why it's one of my favorites or is my favorite not one it is the best that's right the number one <laughs> the number one no onesies and twosies number one all right soldier you're number one so my number one has to be the theme song trailer for oh, a couple reasons so good um, right i am a huge fan of umatsu and a lot of people were worried that he wasn't going to be involved with this project at all because of his health and when that song came on and it said umatsu with yash I lost it like insane loved that song but I think what really not only the music really felt like a lot of the moments in that trailer that music just amplified yeah so like when we saw the promise scene between Tifa and Cloud it just blew my mind because like we're seeing this moment and these two little kids and they're just having a conversation amongst each other about him living his dreams and becoming a hero like his like his hero Sephiroth and that music just, it hit me like hard. And then, you know, we got to see Red 13 and Reeve and Scarlet and Palmer. And it's like all of these reveals in this trailer were things that we'd been waiting for forever to see, especially yes. Red 13. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you see the evil of Shinra in that trailer and what they're capable of. And I think for me, that was just this big emotional impact paired with that Umatsu original song that just it blew my mind and i think that's that's why it's my favorite because it's just so beautifully impactful oh yeah that was that was a super emotional trailer but also like you said just really beefy with details yeah all all really really good picks i think we picked the best three trailers that ever came out honestly i mean the all all the trailers <laughs> have been really good <laughs> but like those <laughs> are the top three um so uh here we have to sign off I'm I'm running no. out of time. I know this has been so fun. There is nothing more fun than just like talk and shop with Final Fantasy VII remake fans. By the way, this has like been mm. so good for my heart. Uh, it feels oh. so good, especially in. Uh, we'll talk about current events for a second right now. A lot of us are social distancing and on shelter in place orders or safer at home or whatever you call it. Because at the moment, this is uh, 
peak coronavirus COVID-19 concerns uh, in America. So um, this was really, really good for us all to connect in this moment. I feel like I haven't seen another human being in like eight years. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been really hard, but this is, uh, I'm so excited that, 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 I'm so excited Remake got delayed and it gets to come out now. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like it it's just like, it feels I know it's complicated because some people are getting their deliveries, not getting their deliveries on time and weren't going to get their deliveries on time even without this crisis because it's on Good Friday. I understand it's not a good time for a lot of people, but I think logistically, while it may be difficult for people, I think for people's hearts right now, this game is going to be so impactful and so important for the world right now. And um, I do get emotional when I when I think about that, uh -huh. because in any adventure story, the main takeaway is that there will always be obstacles and enemies and hard things, but you have to fight through it and you have to keep going because there's a bigger purpose. And and I think that. Final Fantasy VII Remake coming out right now feels right. Mm. So it thank does. you all so it much does. for being here. I have so much appreciation for you all. Um, everybody watching right now, please, please, please go check out their content. Give them a subscribe. Hit the notification bell, even though, you know, it really doesn't matter anymore because YouTube is broken. But um, <laughs> do, do everything right. <laughs> Show them some love. Follow them on Twitter, whatever suits your fancy. Watch their videos. And uh, all the links are in the description below. Uh, once again, this has been The Night Sky Prince, Soldier First Class, and Curious Joy with an I. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Ask them your questions on their channels or tweet at them if you have any questions for them. Um, and uh, if you have any questions for me, you know how to find me and reach me. Uh, you know, the usual outro. It doesn't matter anymore. I love you all. Will you guys do a bye with me? This is how yeah. I do it. Bye! Just like that. Are you ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Bye. 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 Nailed it. <laughs>